Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to do what classical music people do best and love more than anything else, complaining. This is a major fetch. I get to talk about all the horrible ways to package a CD, and I'm going through quite a few of them because I'm completely fed up. I've had it up to here. I'm disgusted with all of the stupid, annoying, complicated, unnecessarily fussy, accident-prone methods of packaging a simple compact disc. It's absolutely insane. And it started right at the beginning of our peregrinations through the CD world. It started with this. The Jewel Box. What an optimistic name for such an atrocious contraption. The one thing this had going for it, ideally, is that when it was intact, it really protected the CD. I mean, that's a good thing, right? That's what it's really there for. And it had this thing here where you could stick a booklet. I mean, the potential was all there. However, it happens to be made of cheap, crappy plastic, and so many things can go wrong, especially nowadays, because when you order a CD, when we bought them in stores, remember, in record shops, they all came in like large bulk packaging, which meant most of these things survived the trip. And you could go through the bins and you could pick out the ones that had intact jewel cases, which was just wonderful. But nowadays, when everything comes through the mail, they just stick them into little paper mailer bags and it guarantees that these things get crushed to smithereens in transit. So the idea of getting one of these that hasn't been cracked on the front or cracked on the back is almost impossible. And, you know, I, I have a pile of, I have to buy, you know, blank jewel cases because I need to throw away the ones I get and replace them with clean ones half the time. It's beyond annoying and it gets to be expensive and it's it's time consuming. And the number of things that can go wrong with one of these is unbelievable. You would think it's simple, but no. First, like I said, you get cracked fronts and cracked backs. Then you get these little tags, these little hingy things. They break off. So the whole front lid goes, yeah, it's gone. Then you have this little little spool thing that supposedly holds the CD. All these little prongs show up broken. How does that happen? What do they do to make all of these little things disappear? So the CD's rattling around inside. It makes you crazy. It's ridiculous. And so, and then if the back breaks, you have to take out this thing like that. Some of them come out nicely and easily, as this one did. Some of them are impossible. And quite often, this thing, the tray, the tray thing here, this thing shatters into a million sharp, extremely dangerous shards of plastic. And you open it up and they go flying all over the place. It's, it's just horrible. So these things can be destroyed in any number of ways. And given the way most CDs arrive in the mail, they do get destroyed any number of ways. It's terrible. And then finally, last but not least, the jewel case is, we are told, an ecological catastrophe. It's a non-biodegradable disgrace, an epic carbon footprint, something that's going to destroy the environment. The entire universe is going to be filled with crushed fragments of jewel cases. They're going to be pulverized into little tiny pieces that litter our beaches and fill up the digestive systems of marine life, preventing them from digesting the natural plankton that they live on and thus destroying the food chain and killing all of us within the next decade or so, all because of the jewel case. Then, as if that isn't so bad, we have to deal with multiple CD jewel cases. Here's, here's a double one. The double ones come in two varieties, usually. There's the kind that opens like this, the sort of gatefold one. This is the better of the two. 
or the one that has the the hinge on the outer side and you open it from the middle flipping it out which is incredibly flimsy and all that does is multiply not multiply the number of things that can already go wrong the more cds you have the more moving parts you have and the more opportunities for the whole thing to get crushed to smithereens and although you may have some extra jewel cases because you know if you have tons of cds you can always throw out some useless cd you didn't want and replace the jewel case with the one you do want it's much harder to find double sets and when you get up to three four and five cds you have to buy separate jewel cases to try and replace the damaged ones and it's just beyond irritating so because of partly the environmental hazards as well as the sheer frustration of receiving these things through the mail the classical music industry which is nothing if not politically correct has started to come up with new more environmentally friendly methods of packaging cds but these have their advantages and disadvantages one of the the very worst is this thing this is a simple paper sleeve just a little paper sleeve. This one happens to have two sides. This is on the BIS label. It was originally originally promoted, no longer I noticed, thank God, as an echo pack, something that was ecologically friendly. Now, much as I love ecology, I am not buying a CD because it's ecologically friendly. I'm buying a CD because it has music and performers on it that I want to hear. That's what I want. And the Echo Pack originally had a little, you know, sanitized for your protection, like, you know, the toilet seats in a hotel, little band around it, sometimes glued on here. <laughs> it wouldn't come off without peeling away the paper and everything. It looked shabby. It really did, especially when, as in this case, the disc is at full price. I mean, if you're going to spend more than $20 on a CD, I want something in the packaging that shows me I'm getting a quality product. I do not want a piece of crap because the environment is going to tank if I buy a CD. Aside from the fact that the CD is made of plastic and that some of these things, these gatefold things, have plastic trays in the bottom, just like the old just like the old jewel cases with the with the additional inconvenience that if the plastic tray on the bottom of the paper thing breaks you're doomed there's absolutely nothing you can do about it you can't replace it you can't do anything all you can do is throw the whole thing out and start over but these things have in addition to the little gatefoldy plastic thing a a paper sleeve a junky paper sleeve for the CD, which is absolutely guaranteed to do terrible things to the playing surface of the CD the more you take it in and put it out. I mean, it's not as bad as those box sets that have the paper sleeves that have the, the envelopes that are actually glued shut with that disgusting sticky stuff that's kind of like snot. <laughs> and when you when you open it, 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 it makes long strands of sticky snot-like goop that gets on the playing surface of your CD. Happily, it's not like that. But even so, this is this thick. It's like this. How are you going to know what's on the disc? This one actually is nice enough to have the information on the spine if you can actually see it. It's so tiny. And, I mean, you might as well just lose this. I mean, they do fit. You could get a million of these into a very small spot without ever knowing what you actually own. I mean, one of the problems with the compact disc from the very beginning is that it's compact. You can't read, like, remember, remember liner notes? Nice decently sized printed notes i mean sometimes you could get that in a booklet but these things are so slim that they practically vanish <laughs> they disappear before you even know what's on it it's really irritating i mean you know i it, I, I admire the attempt but then we have the most horrible box set type packaging that's paper i have here this is verdi at the met there are many sets that are like this, but the worst ones have been these Metropolitan Opera things. Because you see, what's happening is that is that organizations, performing arts organizations, symphony orchestras, opera companies, are not waiting for the record labels not to distribute their stuff. They are making their own CDs, doing their own productions, and distributing it themselves. And as a result, they have to come up with their own 
own proprietary designs for packaging and presentation, and grotesque they are. So here we have the Met selection. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? All these beautiful paper envelopes with all the operas lined up and the nice juicy booklet at the beginning. It's going to be a class product, right? Then you take out the CD. Here's La Traviata, and there's a Wagner one too, by the way. You open it up and you see this horror show. Yes, believe it or not, instead of allowing you to take out the CD from the end of the cardboard sleeve, you have to do it from the middle. How do you do that? <laughs> How do you get the damn thing out without, without either tearing the paper sleeve or, or scratching the playing surface of the CD as one of them rubs against the edge of the other one or the edges of the paper? I mean, what do you, what what do you do with this? Do you do you do it like this way and try and and not get your your, your fingers all over it? And, and I mean, it's stuck. It doesn't. Uh -huh. Try and get it out. There we go. It comes out like that, and then you very oh so it won't go back. Then it doesn't go back. There's like a there's like a, a glued on folded thing in here, and you 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 can't if you get it out. It, it doesn't want to go back in. And by the time you get it back in, you've probably destroyed the playing surface of your CD and it will start merrily skipping along whenever you attempt to play it. How could anybody, any sane person, come up with a packaging concept so unbelievably stupid as to do it that way? It is so ass backwards. It's just unbelievable. But that's not where it ends, because a lot of orchestras are doing their own stuff. One of them is the Berlin Philharmonic. This is, what is it? This is the Tchaikovsky Podatique with Kirill Petrenko. And Berlin Philharmonic has come up with this. Look at this. Lovely. It's big. It's long. It doesn't fit anywhere. There is no place you can put this stuff. It's like a coffee table product. It's not designed to go neatly in a shelf with other CDs. No, no. The reason is because... These, this is the Berlin Philharmonic. And all of the orchestras do it in this way in some way. They're special. They're so special that nothing they make can fit with anything anyone else ever made. Ever. It has to be totally unique, totally distinctive, totally the wrong size for anything you will ever have in your home. And then in this particular case, you get this fabulous, fabulous booklet. Oh, yes, you get these beautiful program booklets. They tell you virtually nothing useful about the music. They're all about themselves. They are exercises in marketing and promotion because orchestras now, oh, did you see that? Look what happened. The CD fell out because they don't give a shit about the CD. They don't care at all about the music. They care about themselves. They care about promoting their name. And in this particular case, the CD, here it is, it goes, it goes somewhere on here. This is, this is the, the, the CD. See, there's like a little spool thing here. And the CD is supposed to go on top of this. It goes here, like that, on this little spooly thing. But there's a problem. The problem is it's so it's so shallow that the CD doesn't grip it. It falls out when you open the book. It just goes rolling out, which is what happens here. You're supposed to be able to grab it because they have like a finger. See the finger thing here? And there's a finger thing on the other side. But if you try and stick your fingers in here, you, you have to have spatulate fingers like a gecko. You know, like you have to be able to climb a wall with your flat suction cup like fingertips. <laughs> that is the only way you're going to be able to get under the CD in order to get it out of this thing. But then when you do, it just it just falls out anyway. And it's more than likely as not, it's going to wind up on the floor or under your coffee table where your dog will stomp on it and you'll never listen to it anyway. So that was the Berlin Philharmonic. And then more recently, more recently, there has been um, an effort by the Cleveland Orchestra, which I think is wonderful. I think it's great, mind you, that orchestras are doing their own stuff because they're the only people who will now. You can't count on the major labels for decades. You, they couldn't really count on the major labels, although they went along with the, the program, you know. So it's great that they do their own stuff. But, but then you wind up with an inmates running the asylum issue. Because once again, here's the Cleveland Orchestra. 
This is their latest. This is the Schubert Symphony No. 9 in C Major, the Great, with credits, horrifying, static, and ecstatic, a squeak bloop extravaganza from the 1970s that should have remained buried for the foreseeable future. But this is, this is still, they did it, they recorded it, they released it, and this is their version of packaging. As you will note, like the Berlin Philharmonic, it is the wrong size for anything. It fits nowhere. It's designed entirely to promote the Cleveland Orchestra. You get, as usual, the lovely, lovely booklet. But you'll note that on the spine, they don't tell you what's, in, what's inside. You can't do it this way. You can't store it that way. Um, I mean, at least the Berlin Philharmonic here tells you what's inside on the spine if you want to store it that way. But here, here, we have a totally different method for destroying the CD within. Because if you look here, it slides into this, this pocket thing. And these pocket things make me crazy because they always tear. They're always in danger of ripping when you try and get the CD out. But to hold the CD firm, they have this, 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 this rubber gummy spool thing here. And the rubber gummy spool thing, you, you, you can't get the CD out without rubbing it across the rubber gummy spool thing, which leads rubber gummy, leaves rubber gummy spool thing residue across the playing surface of the CD. So the first thing you do when you take out your CD is you have to actually wipe it off to make sure that the rubber gummy spool thing residue hasn't destroyed your playing surface. And then trying to put it back, it's the opposite process. Only you can't rub it off because after squeegeeing it across the rubber gummy spool thing, you're just putting it back. There's no way to wipe it until you take it out next time when it's already covered with rubber gummy spool thing scuzzy stuff. I mean, who thought of this? And you do get the usual gorgeous booklet with fabulous photographs and notes by the conductor and the and the general manager and everybody in the world. A recording session. This is as beautiful as can be. It's a lovely deluxe presentation. And it costs, this cost me about 25 bucks on Amazon. These are not cheap. They really aren't. And I happen to agree completely with the concept that you're buying a deluxe product. I mean, that's what this is that it shouldn't be cheap. It doesn't have to be cheap. If you want it that badly, you'll pay 20, I mean, what's 25 bucks? I mean, it's, it's, it's dinner at a restaurant. You know what I mean? For, for, it's, it's an entree. It's the same thing as, 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 as rigatoni bolognese at my local bistro. You're going to spend 25 bucks on it. Hell, you could spend 25 bucks on a hamburger these days. So I'm not complaining about the price as such. However, if you're going to spend that much money, you need to have something that's well thought out, that justifies the expense, that says, yes, you're getting a quality product. And frankly, a note from the general manager, a note from the conductor, which is probably written by somebody else, and, and a couple photos of sessions don't do it. What does it is a product that's made to be consumer friendly, that allows you to listen to the music, to play the music, that preserves the CD, that tells you that what's on the CD, which is technically the product that you're buying, not the photos, not the booklet, not the notes, not the other stuff, that that is what matters. And if you're curious about the Schubert Ninth, by the way, there I, I wrote a review of it. It's up on classicstoday.com. You can go and read the review there. So, I mean, some things actually I still love to write about, you know, at the end, I'm still a writer, not so much a talker, although you'd never know it to watch these things. And it's much just as exciting and rewarding to write an actual review, just like in the good old days when people wrote things. Isn't that nice? I wonder if people still read. I really do. That's an interesting question. That's the source of another rant. So here it is. And uh, I, there, I could go on with this forever, but I've already been talking for 20 minutes. And as you can see, it's an endless topic. 
an endless source of grievance, of fetching, of complaining, of aggravation. It's going on and on, and it's never going to stop. The only th way that it's going to be resolved is when we all do digital downloads and there's no physical product at all. But that's even worse, because then you're spending money for nothing. You're spending money for digits. And that's a whole philosophical question I can't even bother to get into. But those are my thoughts on the, the catastrophe, the marketing and ecological and, and conceptual catastrophe that is modern CD packaging. We just have to get through it somehow. So keep on listening, folks, if you can, if you can get your CDs out of the little packages without destroying them. Take care.